So the one thing I want from the next generation is for publishers to finally end the console wars. The console wars was a really prevalent thing throughout the course of the 7th gen with the Xbox 360 and PS3. They were both striving to be the same platform. And yet when the 8th generation came along, that those fires were still present for the beginning of the generation. But as the PS4 began to evolve into this, you know, single player, uh, exclusive platform that has some of the best AAA exclusives you can buy and then the Xbox has become this uh, fantastic legacy system with the backwards compatibility they became two of their own separate beasts and people do, don't put them against each other so much anymore they only bring them up for very selected reasons and most of these reasons are ones brought up by publishers. Take Activision, who, you know, they do like that, uh, the greenery, they, they love that, and Call of Duty, a series that makes a lot of greenery. And they brought back this approach of let's be exclusive, let's sign a deal with one of these platforms, and we're gonna give the people on that platform all the good stuff, or at least all the good stuff early. Back in the old days, that was on the 360, and as someone who was playing on the 360 back then, it was great. I could play all of the Zombies maps of Black Ops 1 way before all of you PS3 people, haha. <laughs> screw you. But that doesn't happen anymore. That's sort of died off and then Call of Duty brings it back. Modern Warfare, which is arguably the best Call of Duty of the generation, I would say, uh, they said, hey, you like the survival mode from Modern Warfare 3? You want that in Spec Ops? You can. But only if you're on PlayStation for a goddamn year. And it's like, oh, good, we're, we're doing this again. And when that happened, there was this huge uproar of Fanboys saying, yes, this is why PlayStation is the best and all of you Xbox and PC people can suck it. And it's like, you don't see that just come up in conversation as much anymore. Because Xbox, PlayStation, PC, Switch, they're all doing their own things now. They don't have to be pit against each other because they're trying to be different. And yet when you bring this sort of approach to a game back up again, it just relights the fire and everyone starts getting aggy again. And it's down to the publishers that make those stupid deals. Yes, there's loads of money in it. Yes, it makes complete business sense. But it sucks for the consumer. A, because you're alienating so many people in one fell swoop. Xbox and PC people are a pretty miffed. I, myself, who play Modern Warfare on PC, still won't get to play the survival till later this year. We were all annoyed. But also, like I said, it just brings back this hatred, this pointless hatred between console players. And even PC people being thrown into the mix as well. So... The console wars can end. We've seen how much more mature player bases have been over the last couple of years with how things have gone this gen, and yet these stupid deals, these stupid, random, pointless means of making things exclusive just relights those fires and just pisses everyone off. So publishers, if you're making a game, don't give people platform exclusive content, provided that it's at least available everywhere else as well, in some capacity. If you're gonna give Mario and Luigi hats to cars at Rocket League just on the Switch, fine. Don't lock off entire game modes for the sake of money. It just makes you look shit. The one thing that I want to see from the next generation of consoles is, and this sounds like an umbrella thing, but it's risk taking. I just, I want to see a return to game devs literally leaning into things that they might find to be, you know, unproven or something that we haven't seen before. I just, I feel like this generation of consoles was the one where more than ever, the biggest companies in the medium, the ones that should be leading the charge with why video games are, is one of the greatest mediums on earth. And um, they decided to play it so safe. You know, we've seen things like the Ubisoft formula, even on the so side, the vast majority of their things have started falling into this same bracket of, you know, camera over the shoulder, slower expository, that approach to narrative design, something that came from The Last of Us, but has now been applied to Days Gone, God of War, Horizon, whatever. Uh, it's just that thing where I want to see big companies take risks. And as much as I mentioned God of War, at least something like that managed to leave a mark because, you know, you had that sort of quick fire co-op gameplay where you could just push a button and have a trace help you out, backed up by a stellar script. You kind of had someone reapproaching a character like Kratos and giving him this whole new perspective and this whole new sense of weight to everything that he was doing. Um, but the likes of Horizon and Spider-Man, they're great, solid games, dependable games, but they don't come up when we talk about the greatest games of all time 
because you have to be reminded about them because they're so formulaic. And I love those games, but there's no, there's not a single new game mechanic in Spider-Man and not a single new game mechanic in Horizon that hasn't been done 10 times before to prove that it's a bankable game mechanic. You know, we had, a, we had in Rockstar's case, we had a company that was putting out Manhunt, the Warriors, Bully, GTA, Midnight Club, Smugglers Run, everything across the 2000s only to dial everything back and go, okay, what's the most bankable thing we can do? Let's zero in on that. But it's just, I want big conversations. I want a big variety of game genres. I don't want to have to turn to the indie space to see the variety present in, again, what is one of the finest mediums of entertainment on earth. Okay, so what I want to see from the next generation of gaming comes specifically from Sony, who, I look, I've been called a Sony shill or a Sony fanboy plenty of times on this channel. And it is true that I love their exclusives over the past generation. I think they've really done some next level stuff with their new IP, how they've reinvented old IP, and their games in general are kind of solidifying why we need strong narrative single player games in an era where everyone is turning towards multiplayer. But going forward, into the next gen. I don't just want to see a Sony style kind of dominate everything else in their library because at the moment we are kind of seeing the company as a whole pivot towards making all of their games these, like I said, single player, story driven, narrative heavy games that are played in a third person will have open world elements or be open world entirely and that's good. It's made for some excellent titles but I want to see more diversity when it comes to genres going into, you know, the next decade. I want to see more first person shooters from Sony. I want to see more driving games for Sony because even though driving Club had a lot of things wrong with it and it didn't run. The core game itself and the gameplay was really good. There's no reason why we only need Gran Turismo for as good as that is. We can have, you know, an alternate experience like Xbox has Forza Horizon and it has the regular Forza. So I just want to see Sony not get too complacent with their style of games and continue to experiment and uh, take a chance on new genres and kind of fill gaps in the market that they're currently not filling essentially. I want more first person shooters essentially. I want more online games from them. I don't want that to be the only thing they do, but I want these other experiences to fit alongside the third person, character driven, story heavy games that they do so so well and that's essentially their bread and butter. So essentially, Sony, keep what you're doing, just do more. Sounds, sounds ungrateful, that sounds very entitled, but just want more driving games. The one thing that I want from the next generation is for generally just VR to be cheaper and easier for everyone to run and play with really. Um, like obviously at the time, yes, VR is incredibly gimmicky. Um, it's bulky, it's expensive, and it's just stupid to run really. For example, my HTC Vive that I've got um, cost me around 800 quid, which I bought back in like 2016, 2017, something like that. Um, and then on top of that, my PC, which was about like a thousand pounds, it just gets really expensive really quickly. But if it was like cost effective, easier to run and just easier to set up overall, it would just be so much easier for everyone to like get their hands on it and just enjoy it really. Like for example, if you are able to play Half-Life Alex, you'll understand how immersive and incredible that game is. Honestly, every single thing in that game is just so insane. It's just so hard to put into words how insane this game is. You really need to try it for yourself. Honestly, just watching it on like a 2D computer screen doesn't do it any justice. So please, if you are able to get your hands on VR, then I highly would recommend it. Or even just like a general like VR game, it's incredibly like immersive, as I keep bloody saying. And yeah, it's a great time. Um, but if it was easier to set up, easier to run, and a lot cheaper, then honestly, it'll be it'll be pu it'll push the VR industry in the right direction, and it'll just be be brilliant because VR is great. So the one thing that I really want from the next generation console is just a good lineup of games upon launch. Um, we've had like a few kind of teasers with both Xbox and PlayStation and obviously seeing the few things that Xbox has kind of announced so far didn't really impress me. There was a couple on there that I was like, okay, yeah, I'm kind of excited for that, I guess. You know, some new games that I've not heard of, but 
I'm just super excited to just see what they actually have in store with us game wise like I just really hope that you know the sort of compatibility that they are saying where you can sort of play old games from the PlayStation on the new one if that's going to hold up graphics wise and just sort of seeing just how good these games are when they actually release them. I want some new indie games and some you know sequel sequels and prequels or whatever it is that they can give us you know they've been teasing Silent Hill and and we've got The Last of Us 2 coming out soon which is going to be on the next gen console and it's just I'm just super excited to just finally see what it is that they have in store for us and I just hope that it's just a good array for both sides we've obviously seen more from xbox so far than playstation so for me i'm more excited to see what playstation has in store because i feel like anything at this point is better than what what microsoft and xbox has given us and shown us so um yeah i'm just 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 intrigued to see what it is that they'll pull out of the bag upon launch um whether it be exclusives or um you know completely new ips and and games and indie games and um, yeah, I just, I'm fed up of waiting and I just want to see what it is that we are supposed to be getting excited for and, um, you know, spending our money on because I'm not going to buy either one before I know what it is that I'm actually getting in you know, in return, you know, I'm not going to buy uh, an Xbox at the moment and I'm not going to save up my money and go for the Xbox because from what I've seen so far, it's not got me hyped, it's not got me excited. So at the moment, my money's on PlayStation, so fingers crossed they give us something good.